Nathan, I know you spoke about the disappointment of the performance last night, but how hard did you go in yesterday's review? Um, no, we were really specific about it. There's some key, area, key areas in our team defence in particular that we just didn't get right. and you know, I was critical of the forwards um, straight after the game, but it was a whole team responsibility and it's something we want to remedy for Friday night. On the forwards specifically, I mean, I know you've got so many guys out. How much change can you make and does there need to be change made there? Yeah, look, you've, if blokes aren't um, capable or, or able to, to play the way you want to play, there's a couple of ways you remedy that. The, you challenge them, we, we train it better. Um, we simplify it if, if, if there's a grey area at all for them. And, uh, and then there's selection, so there's plenty of different steps that go along the way. But that we, um, we as a team, uh, didn't present the way that we'd presented since the bye, and it was a disappointing performance for all of us. And you know, we will go out in the track today and and train those um, those specific elements and and present better on Friday. So on that so the main aspect of the forwards game, would you like to see improve? Exactly? No, nah, looks team defence. Yeah, let's not get caught up in the forwards because yeah, our mids were outworked and, and our backs, you know, weren't able to. You know, knock over their direct opponents often enough. So it was, you know, we, as I said, we gave up 39 insides, which is sounds like a sound defensive performance, but we gave up 134 uncontested marks, and that's poor. Um, it was only really going to be one part of the game that was going to um, allow the opposition to have it their way, and that was it. And they took it, and we allowed it, and we need to uh, take that away from our opponents. How's Dusty Moore at this stage? Yeah, he's, um, he'll work to prove his fitness today, but we won't be taking any risks on him. If he's right to go, we'll play him. Um, but if he's not, there's, um, yeah, we'll give him another week and see how he goes uh, beyond that. You've had a knack of losing players in games. I think he might be AFL number one. <coughs> Pendles on the weekend. How much has that sort of hurt your record and, and things like that this year? Oh, it doesn't help. Like, you want... Um, you know, when you take take the field with 22, you... you you need the game at elite level. You need all of your players um, having a uh, having a high minimum um, output. So if if you're down to 21 or 20, you know that that hurts. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, you know this particular game against the Bulldogs uh, in round 10 was probably the the nadir of it for us. And you know playing out the last sort of 20 minutes without a without a rotation, but. We don't expect to be in that situation, and we want to. We want to pick 22 blokes and get the job done. Is he almost your, your most important, Darcy Moore? Your most important player structurally now? Has he become that, in, even though he's so young? Um, yeah, look, he is. He's a, you know, he's a he's a very good young player who, you know, brings specific strengths to the table. His aerial abilities um, probably already elite, but he's still going to grow that. Um, his contest is his first class. His intensity around the ball has has always been good, and we've seen that you know since day dot that he's arrived at the footy club. Um, he's got really strong leadership potential, but he but he's he's one of you know we need. You know, we talk about structure. You often go to to tall tall forwards or tall backs or ruckmen, um, but the fact is that the game's mostly played on the ground, and uh, I think. Um, there's a lot of teams that are going a little bit smaller these days, so we'll we'll look at that and consider that, um, and a bit of exploration in that that last three weeks as well. Injuries have seemed an issue for the club for the last two or three years, probably. Yep. How do you fix it? What's your sort of approach? Yeah, well, yeah, we we weren't sitting on our hands after the last couple of years, and um, our soft tissues um, through 14 and 15 were were significant, significantly poor. Um, and we, we reviewed that at, at the time and, and in the end the, the injuries that we've had this year have been largely sort of traumatic injuries or, or, or contact injuries. Um, and even that, you don't take that for granted that you can't do anything about that. You know, we, we try and dig deep and see if there's anything that we could have, we could have improved in our preparation of our players for that. Um, there, there is um, bad luck in the game and that's going to happen at time to time but the injuries that we've sustained this year are very different profile, have a very different profile to what we had through um, through 14 and 15, so um, they hurt just as much because um, they've been to key personnel, but you've got to find a way around it. What's your feel on Pendles uh, for this week? Barmy, I think short-term test, uh, could be six weeks, yeah, but uh, will he play this Friday? <laughs> can't, can't argue with Barmy's reading of it. I, 
I um, log on to the Blackmores report to know how, what the availability is for for my players. Um, yeah, Pendles is um, he's a tough competitor. I've said it continually. Um, the things that he takes onto the field and carries that other blokes normally wouldn't. Um, and because he's a Rolls Royce and we see him as an elite player, um, it doesn't it doesn't often um, even hit the public forum. But um, yeah, look, he's he's battling with that with that ankle injury, but we'll give him every chance. Will he train uh, today? Uh, no, he'll be off legs. We'll manage him today and probably have a crack it on Thursday. And just on Darcy, I know you said you, you wouldn't take any risks, but he, is mm. he more likely or, or less likely this week? Uh, probably probably 51-49. I won't tell you which way. Mm-hmm. So it's funny to bring the timeline forward for when he make a decision. When do you expect him to make a call? Um, when he's ready, you know, we've, um, I get asked this yeah, no. every presser, mate, but no, there's nothing new to report. I mean, you said you sort of thought October when he had an operation, you seemed to speak on radio about it being before the end of the season. Has that changed from your perspective? or um, Not that I know of, no. I don't have any new info for you. And what, did, what did you learn from the last clash with the Dogs and what's their most threatening aspect of their game compared to yours? Well, I think you can't help but sit back and admire the way that they go about their footy. Um, yeah, you know, their their work rate uh, around the contest is is probably you know competition elite, um, the benchmark. Um, they they're prepared to outnumber at the contest really heavily, so they they commit they commit heavy numbers to the ball and and their pressure on the on the opposition's um, possessions is high. Um, you know, we we value that side of the game ourselves and, and it's it's great to be able to test yourself against um, the side that you feel is doing it best. Um, they often, uh, or, uh, they move the ball really well through their back six as well. Um, when you're Hannison and Boyd and um, you know, potentially Matty Suckling are up and about bigs, you know, these guys um, these guys give them a lot of run off the half back so you need to be aware of that. Um, and whilst they might not hit the scoreboard as much, we know that their forward pressure is elite. So th- there's there's some real, there's some real um, key and clear challenges when you come up against the Bulldogs, and everyone knows it. Like most good sides, everyone knows it. But to be able to counter it is another thing. And um, yeah, you know, they knocked North over last week, just in a really dour struggle. Just the game was closed down, and there wasn't a lot. There wasn't a pretty game, but it was a hard game, and that's what we expect. Can you elaborate on some of the things you're seeing come through in your, in your players and your game that does give you that confidence that you're you're headed in the right direction? Yeah, look, we've for the whole we've been able to, um, you know, we've been able to put good pressure on on sides, and we've we've all, that's part of our our DNA. We we know that we're respected as a side who genuine uh, generally puts on good pressure on the opposition um, disposal. Um, the thing that we've worked on and we're adding is our ability to to be in good shape in transition. Um, we haven't been able to finish our last kick inside 50 in our offence as much, but our back half movement's improved and um, we're getting out of our back half a little bit better um, year by year over the last three. Um, we actually defend we defend movement, slow movement in particular from our um, from our own forward line pretty well bar last week um, over the last six weeks in particular but you know we, we, we get in better shape more often and um, with more continuity in our playing group we're pretty confident that it stacks up um, we've um, since the bye we've you know the GWS game was case in point you know just played four quarters of our footy probably three quarters actually after the after being dominated in that first 15 minutes but um, it stacked up and our best has been good, but as I've said often, uh, a, a good team, a great team, you actually don't judge them on their best, you judge them on how high their low level is and, and we need to improve that. When you've got that, that gap, Nathan, I mean, how frustrating is that? And is that a product of younger side or is it a guy still picking and choosing when they want to go? I mean, no. how did... Oh, it's, 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 that continuity is a big thing, but I mean, at the same time, we've, so I think we've played um, th- 39 players this year. Um, yeah, you know, and in the last two weeks we've seen Rupert Will stand up and and you know play really solid footy as a as a legitimate inside mid, and we've seen his strengths come to the fore. Um, you know, James Ace has, has come in and his second crack back up has been really good for us. Josh Smith has continued to take every opportunity, uh, so we're still we're still seeing players put their hand up regardless of age or experience. Um, 
and you, we, and I think like any club, we'll just we keep refining and and um, shining a light on those positive uh, attributes and the things that are working for us. And um, you know, we continue to work so that it all comes together for us. Um, 2016 wasn't to be, and we've had uh, a couple of hard, tough years um, as a footy club. But you know, we we feel like we're starting to understand uh, the blokes that can, and the blokes that can't, and we'll keep making decisions around that. Did you ever return your call, sorry, from uh, the Lin Jong call that you made? You, or are you going to meet him Friday night for the first time? Um, no, I didn't, I didn't hear back from Bevo, so I think that was probably done and overblown at the time and um, Did didn't hear as much about the Brad Hill one after that, so I think maybe it was just us. Did you tag him on Friday night? Bevo. Lin Jong. <laughs> 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 well, he's, he's, um, he's playing... An even more important role now, isn't he? You know, given given a couple of their midfielders are out, so you know, no, clearly we've got a healthy regard for for him as a footballer, and um, uh, as much as we do for the Bulldogs as a club. Forgive me if you've been asked about this, but Jamie Elliott's obviously missed the whole year. Yeah, where's he sit in terms of being ready for pre-season when he's back? Uh, he's going okay. He's um, yeah, the surgery is obviously quite significant. Um, to put some support into his um, into a vertebrae, so um, yeah, it's been a disappointing year for him. No matter how you look at it, and um, by the time we get the th in three weekends' time, he'll be on on par with the rest of his teammates. So looking forward to 2017, but right now he's um, yeah he's been through hell and back um, for a young player who has really high aspirations about. You know what he wants to be as a footballer and what he wants to provide to the club, uh, but his uh, progress has been positive. In particular, his um, recovery from that surgery in the last month or so, um, and we're pretty bullish about where he can get to. He'd probably be in full training end of December, January, um, but we've got plenty of time to graduate his um, his load so that we can give him every chance of getting back to full fitness. With the solo out for the year <coughs> and Darcy Moore out maybe this weekend, is there anyone you want to new in the forward line you want to have a look at either? Positional change or anything? Yeah, we, we, hands are tied a little. If, if, if our VFL side's performing pretty well, um, yeah, Tyson Goldsack's probably been the most consistent of those, um, playing as a as a as a backman. Um, yeah, Tom Phillips has been encouraging down there. Um, obviously, Jordan Dego he went back for, has been back for a week. Um, Adam Oxley has played a little bit of time wing forward. Um, yeah, look, we've um, Alan Tuvey, who just keeps doing what Tuz does. He's been really consistent. Um, so we've got we've got um, we've got some options. Brent McCaffrey through the midfield. So we've got we've got some options. But um, as as you can see by the um, by our need to go deep through our lists throughout the year, it's, it'd be pretty hard to find a new face for you. You spoke last night <coughs> on pressure. In light of what happened to Damien Hardwick, and admitted, you know, pressure on yourself and that sort of thing. Yep. How, how how big a toll does it take, especially in a year like this when it hasn't, mm. you know, been where you perhaps where you want to be? Oh, it's 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 shared. I mean, it's not just it doesn't just go to the senior coach. I mean, we all um, put it huge hours and huge time and effort into what we do. Um, so when you, when your best laid plans don't come to fruition, um, either due to things in your control or things outside of it, it still it still affects you. So when I talk of pressure it's it's a reality of the caper. You know, we don't exist in a vacuum and you know, when you're at the elite level there's high expectations on on output and performance. And when you don't reach those standards as often as you'd like to, well then you feel it internally, you know, before anything external. So in inside the place we're still working really diligently to to get the best out of this next two and a half week period for us, the three games, and we've got some big challenges. So we can still take steps forward in the way that we approach it and the way that we go about it. And that won't be without um, feeling some pressure of some sort because that can generally be the fuel for performance as well.